Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. Last episode, we got the rainbow generator up and running, and we built the induction matrix to hold all of our power. However, we are still missing one induction provider, which hopefully we can get today. We also upgraded our GP generation by adding a couple more mills here, including the dragon egg mill. And to finish off last episode, we also built the quantum quarry. I've been doing some more filtering with this thing, and I think I've got everything filtered by now. Every so often I've been checking this chest and it looks like we have a couple more items that I have to add to the filler. But yeah, the rate that we're getting and also processing these materials is very nice now. The first thing we're going to do today though is make the power monitor. And we're going to hook up some redstone logic to this rainbow generator so that hopefully when we are low enough on power, it will turn itself on and generate us some more and then automatically turn itself off. Alright, so I've been messing with this a bit. Some things have changed around in the configurations. First of all, I've added an, a separate power output for this induction matrix, and we're going to separate our power network out. So instead of having everything on the one link ID 2, we're instead going to link the builder and also the quantum quarry to this link ID 3, and that way they're on separate power cells, since these can only transport 20,000 RF a tick each. In the future, we can upgrade these a bit more to get a bit more power throughput, but by separating them out, it means that we can effectively make our power throughput 40,000 RF a tick, and this should help to keep the speed up on this quantum quarry. Oh man, look at how fast items are moving through this dimensional transceiver. This is our builder quarry here combined with the quantum quarry. As for the redstone control in this thing, actually we're not going to use the power monitor. I had this whole uh, setup with cycling power in and out of two induction ports, and then reading it from a capacitor bank. But I found out that these induction ports can actually emit a redstone signal. So we just have a comparator here, comparing to signal strength of 13, which keeps it about 85% full, and then just gets inverted, and then sent to this wireless transmitter, which is connected to all of the generators here. But at least this way we don't have to worry about manually flicking the switch anymore. Let's also just double check here at the start how close we are to another induction provider. Actually, we're only missing a bit of lithium, which we still have to hook up to our applied energistic system, but we should have stacks on stacks of this stuff. And some copper wire. And when I say some, I'm going to make a lot of copper wire. <laughs> we have over 30,000 ingots here, so we may as well make it all a lot of it into wire anyway. I love this metal press. Well, while we wait on the world's fastest machine over there, <laughs> Let's also look into some armour upgrades. This has been a couple of episodes overdue, as our Wildwood set has kind of outgrown us at the moment. It's also getting very expensive to repair, so I think we should look into the Dark Steel set. And in fact, we can even upgrade this to the Ender set, and then eventually the Stellar set. To get enough recipe slots for this armour though, we're going to need to once again upgrade our Applied Energistic system here. We're down to the last slot. Yeah, that should just about do us for probably about half of this episode, <laughs> and then we'll have to upgrade it once again. But at this point, actually, the recipes for the dark set don't look too bad, it's just the diamond helmet, which in this pack is default recipe, which I'm very surprised to see. Some enderium and some dark steel, which we should have plenty of. But to upgrade it, we need some guardian diodes, which are made in slice and splice. But these things are pretty cheap anyway. So there is our dark helm, the dark chest plate, the leggings, and the boots. And it turns out we have enough materials to upgrade this to the full ender set as well. Don't think there's a quest for this thing, but we can upgrade this further. And to upgrade it, I think we need one of these dark steel anvils. So in terms of the options we have to upgrade this thing, there's actually quite a lot here in JEI. But these upgrade kits are actually not very cheap, to be honest. <laughs> I think it is worth investing in though. Alright, how do we look with our new armour set on? <laughs> oh, that looks kind of derpy actually with the helmet on. I'm not sure I like that so much. Let's see about some upgrades though. So to apply any upgrades to these things, it looks like we have to have the empowered upgrade on all of them. So let's first of all just start with that thing. I'm not sure if we're going to go all the way up to empowered 4. So we got 4 of the empowered upgrade kits. We first of all have to activate these with right click, and I think this does consume some player levels. And then we'll apply one to each piece of armour. So after we empower it, we also want to charge it up to give it some power. This also acts as a protection effect for our armor. Alright, so I've been doing some crafting and upgrading. Currently we have empowered 3 on all of our equipment here. I've also added inventory 1 to the chest plate and speed 3 to the leggings. And to go along with the dark upgrades, you can also enchant this thing. So I have the start of some enchants on this. We still have to upgrade this though. I also upgraded our electromagnet from Ender.io to uh, actually Edition's Ring of Magnetizing, which I think is just a better, I mean I hope it's a better <laughs> magnet. It does take two of these electromagnets to craft. And lastly, we also have the Flux Capacitor from Thermal Expansion. 
I've put on holding 4 on this thing so it can hold 75 million RF. And this thing will keep our uh, bobbles and also gear topped off with RF. So yeah, we'll keep upgrading our gear in the future, but man, this speed is very nice. So next, I think I'm going to take some time to upgrade all of our machines here. Alright, so I've been doing some upgrades. Not all of the machines are upgraded yet, but the ones we use most frequently do have their upgrades in them. I also did upgrade some of the machines over here, mainly the ones making energized dark ingots. And I also crafted up this reflux column. This thing will uh, increase the conversion efficiency of fossil fuels, so we get more naphtha for the liquefacted coal. And yeah, we need the naphtha to convert to refined fuel, which makes our energized dark ingots. I also did put a few more augments on the armor. We have night vision, the elytra upgrade, and I also threw on step assist and flippers on the boots as well. All right, well, with some more upgrades out of the way, let's move on to the next stages of chapter 13. We still have this big block down the bottom, and I would like to get down to ender chests today. We looked a bit at these last episode, and I thought we were gonna have to get into some multi-blocks, but it turns out you can make these in the end. As you can see though, there's a lot of different hoops we have to jump through before we can get down here still. And the first of which is the basic ender alloy, which takes enderium and osmeridium. We currently don't produce osmeridium or enderium passively, so that, let's add a couple of alloy smelters to be able to do that. We should also look at getting the iridium ore back to the overworld. We are producing this uh, from the laser in the end. Yeah, we have 1200 ore here. And in fact, what is the best way to process iridium? It looks like probably the induction smelter with cinnabar. Although if we were to do this, we would probably have to look at a better way of getting cinnabar. I think for now what we're going to do is add it to our sag mills here at the ore processing. And in fact, since all of the ore is currently in our ME system, we can actually add it to this interface here. And hopefully this should add it into the sides of these sag mills. If it has space, it may get uh, locked on the things coming from our quarry there. Yeah, there we go. Now we're processing iridium. But yeah, once we get the ender chests, it will hook up to this main drawer network. And then it, we can filter it in the insert of this crate here. In fact, let's just do that. And it's also nice that this gives us platinum this way as well. This sag mill is also producing a flint and gravel byproduct from this iridium now. So to fix that, we can just add a trash can here with a filter on there. And this also means we'll have to give iridium and platinum its own drawer on the outputs here. There we go. Which should mean we have all stock for this alloy smelter to make us osmiridium. And in fact, I think we will do the storage downgrade on all of these drawers. So yeah, we're now getting osmiridium, enderium base, and finally enderium. And I know there is a recipe straight to Enderium. I think we can do this in, is it the induction smelter maybe? Oh, it's the arc furnace. Yeah, we can turn platinum, the lead ingots, and the enderpearls straight into Enderium this way. Whereas the same recipe in the alloy smelter gives you the Enderium base. And I've chosen to do it this way since we can use Enderium base in the empowerer for empowered payless. So this way it passively gives us both materials that we need. So now that we have these three materials, I guess we add a fourth alloy smelter for the basic ender alloy. Oh, and I guess we'll need a fifth for the enhanced, and probably a sixth for, yeah, yeah, sixth for the advanced as well. Luckily, these alloy smelters are really easy to craft nowadays. We can just hit the button, and it does it all for us. And it's even quite quick now with all the upgrades we've put on our machines. And since we only have two slots left on our ingot wall here, I think we're going to start a new one over, over on this side. There's still a lot of different ingots we have to passive, and I think we're, we'll save those two for pink slime, which we'll have to tackle next, actually. So we can place some frame trim and connect up all of these drawer networks. And then we can start the new row of machines right about here. And we can just add in our newly created osmiridium and enderium ingots to this new alloy smeller. And that gives us our basic ender alloy. So yeah, there's now two different ways we, we need to take this alloy. There is the ingot and then we also have to make this inactive ender core. These are definitely something that we will want to automate as looking at the recipes for this advanced core. We can, of course, use them in the ender chests, but they're also used later on in magic. They are used in uh, thomcraft and also in blood magic. Looks like a bit of bewitchment as well. So yeah, to craft these, we need obsidian sticks, which I think is just obsidian and ender crystals. We're already farming this stuff. So we can just drop in some recipes in our applied energistic system. So looking at the next stages of the quest, I would also like to automate the next stage of ingots. This is gonna require us to hook up the steam and restonia crystals. And just to recap, we need Empowered Restonia with DT Fuel and Steam. And we do already have the mechanism stuff set up. So we have this PRC for DT Fuel and Steam. 
This is still not linked to our applied energistic system though. So what is the best way to do that I wonder? Since we we need to have the input and output from separate sides here. And this pressurized tube is kind of in the way. <laughs> um, I think I set up something like this could work though. So we have the interface here which will connect up to the line that is over there. So when we request the pattern, the interface will push into the wooden crate, which we're going to extract on brown here. Then we'll have to set the side of the machine to input items from the right hand side and output from the left. And then this conduit on the left hand side will pull from the machine and then put it back in the interface to complete the craft. It's very similar to the enchanter setup we have over there. We just have to hook up our flux cable here. And let's not forget to name our interface. Now that we have an AE connection over here, we can also hook up the lithium dust drawer. I was just manually taken from this drawer before, but it's going to be nice to have the storage bus on here. And also lock the drawer. So now we can encode the recipe from Empowered Restonia to Steaming Restonia. We have yet to automate the Empowered Restonia crystals, which does involve adding in another empowerer. And in fact, we should probably do that since we don't have any more Empowered Restonia. But I think that's something I'll add in between episodes, and for now we'll just uh, put a full stack of materials in, in this chest, and we'll just batch craft this stuff. Yeah, hopefully a full stack should be enough to get us through this episode, but it's easy enough to add more now. I mean, these input items now are basically free, as we have all the inputs automated by now. So let's also just test to make sure the Steam and Restonia crystal automation works. We have five right now. It's kind of slow, we may have to upgrade that PRC a bit, but it, the craft looks like it does complete. Alright, so now we've automated steam in Restonia, we have the basic ender alloys. We need to get this ender rope. So these take vibrant crystals, which we can make. The string we're farming, the ender alloys we just made, um, and industrial leather. We made industrial leather actually pretty early on in the pack, but I think it's worth automating it at this point, since we need it later on for some of the magical leathers. But we have to first of all start at the bottom, and at the bottom is raw industrial leather. And to get the raw leather, we need treated leather. And I remember this from episode 1, uh, which does mean we will have to farm leather, and I, we're not doing this currently, so um, I wonder what the best way to get leather is. Looking through the recipes here, I think honestly the easiest way is to do the atomic reconstructor. We could farm cows, and later on we can use mystical agriculture. Or there's also the industrial squeezer from Rotten Flesh, but then we have to deal with the blood byproduct which I don't think there's much use for at this point in the game. So I think what we'll do is add to our Atomic Reconstructor automations here. And some of you guys pointed out, by the way, that we could we could have saved some interfaces with this setup. And yeah, you're right. <laughs> we could have uh, level emitted these precision droppers instead. Yeah, I think something like this should work. So we have the level emitter here set on leather for 64, and this is inverted. The extraction here is set to active with a signal. And then I've also blacklisted uh, Rotten Flesh on this extract as this is the one that's connected to the bottom dropper, which acts as the dropper for empowered crystal bundles. And we don't want it to go out to the right hand side here, we want it to be in this dropper here. So when we add some rotten flesh in here, it should start to get dropped. And if we turn this back on, we should see our leather, yeah. And now we just have to add this to the ranged collector, and also give it its own drawer. Yeah, there we go, so now leather should be automated. So now with the leather, we have to make treated leather. And you know what, after looking through some of the recipes some more, I don't think we're going to end up passive in this stuff. Instead, we'll just add uh, on-demand recipes for this. So yeah, we will just add the pattern here, but we do still have to deal with the water bucket here. And I think the best way to do that is to use the Ender IO fluid tank again. So I've hooked up all of the inputs for this. I added a second interface back here to supply buckets. And I also realized while I was hooking this up that we didn't have any inserts on this glass bottle maker. And this thing we set up for our generators, for the rainbow generator, so this could have actually been quite dangerous if we had run out of bottles, as I think it was down to the last glass bottle in here. But I have added the glass bottles back into this interface here. But to get the buckets in here, we are actually currently using up all of our buckets, making milk. So we should somehow control the amount of buckets we're using up. I mean, we don't really need 52 buckets of milk, <laughs> considering I think they last uh, 2 minutes each, something like that. Oh no, 24 seconds, but even at that, I mean, yeah, we should limit it to at least a stack. And to do that, I think we'll just use the level emitter and then enable redstone controls on the fluid tank here. And I think 48 buckets of milk, that should be enough, right? <laughs> yeah, that'll be fine. And yeah, as you can see here, we already have our first water bucket, which we're going to output to a drawer. The drawer will only hold one by default, but I think we want a slightly bigger buffer than that of water buckets. Let's maybe do eight buckets. I think that should be plenty. Oh wait, it still only stacks to one. 
Oh, this might be the weird NBT data thing. Maybe this ha maybe the tank has to input them. Yeah, there we go. Now it stacks. All right. And we'll also just need a recipe for lime dye. And now we can request treated leather. This should also give us our water bucket back. So I don't think there's much need in crafting more. So yeah, the next step is to make raw industrial leather. And this thing requires us to have buffaloes, imps, uh, stalacrape, sugar, and our treated leather. Unfortunately, all of our buffaloes have... Well, I don't know where they went. <laughs> They're gone. So uh, we're going to have to make some more buffaloes. As for the imp leather though, I don't think we have much of a choice other than to farm them or summon them. I did notice that actually in our quest book we almost have access to the powered spawner. So that actually may be an option for our imps. To get the powered spawner though, we need to make some of these dark solarium thrusters. And uh, yeah, these are going to take some uh, processing to be able to set up. But actually it doesn't look too bad to craft at this point. You know what, let's come back to these two materials later on in this episode. We have some backlogged from earlier. We have uh, some buffalo leather here which we can turn into scraps. And we have 37 imp leather. As for the stalacrape though, we have thousands of this stuff. We are farming it in our farming station. However, we're not getting sugar. So we might as well use the extra space here and farm some more sugar canes. Unfortunately, I don't think these sugar cane can be planted on aqua soil. So we have to do this thing with a water, <laughs> vanilla style. And we do still already have the drawer here for sugar canes. So now we can add in our recipes for raw industrial leather. And I guess we'll need one for sugar. And to convert it from the raw leather, we need one of these chemical injection chambers with sodium. And we get sodium with the electrolytic separator from brine. So I'm encoding the recipes for all of these machines. We need a electrolytic separator and the injection chamber. And I came down to steel, steel rods. And I was thinking about this earlier on, I think I mentioned it in a previous episode actually, but to get steel rods, or any rods for that matter, we have to use the metal press. Which is the most efficient way to do it technically, since we get one to one. But since we're now getting so much steel and iron, I think I'm just going to brute force it <laughs> and do this crafting recipe. for steel rods instead. So there is our chemical injection chamber. And the electrolytic separator. Alright, so I grabbed some extra fluid storage buses and interfaces, but actually we may be able to squeeze it in in this wall. We need to separate the brine, which we're getting from this thermal evaporation tower. Actually, no, it's this one we're getting it from, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, then maybe in that case it is worth doing it through AE. And instead what we'll do is hook up a buffer tank here, set to, it looks like we've done yellow for brine. And then we can plug this in right here, to our connection that we ran today. And we'll also want to partition this just for brine. And then behind us here, we can have our fluid interface and then electrolytic separator on top. Actually, no, I forgot. These have to. These are very sided machines. Hold on. Yeah, I think instead we'll move it over a block and then place this <laughs> backwards. We'll ask for brine in our fluid interface. All right, so yeah, this thing is going to give us chlorine and sodium. And I think the thing we're interested in here is the sodium. Is there any use for chlorine for us? We can make hydrogen chloride and we need this for shards, which I think we actually do need for uh, some magic later on. Yeah, we do. Okay. So I think it is going to be worth buffering this chlorine. But first of all, we have to get the sodium inside this chemical injection chamber. And I don't know if this machine auto outputs. It doesn't look like it does. Well, in that case, let's, yeah, let's shift this over one block. And I know that just voided a bunch of gases there. <laughs> so I think I got this figured out. I crafted up two ultimate gas tanks. The one on the left here is going to buffer our chlorine, which we'll use later on. But um, yeah, the next one is buffering sodium, which gets inserted into the chemical injection chamber. And then we have our pattern here for industrial leather, which is going to be inserted into the interface below this. That should hopefully push the items into the input of this injection chamber. And then for the output, we're just taken from the side and then back into the interface. So let's try this recipe out. We are at 19 right now. Let's see if we can request one more. The machine may need some upgrades though. Oh nice, it did actually finish. Alright, so that is industrial leather automated. I mean, besides the imp and buffalo. But with the industrial leather, that means that we can now get our ender rope. So there is a few recipes for this. We need the, the vibrant crystal recipe. And then, I th yeah, I think we've got everything else for this one. So now with all three input items, we can now request our enhanced ender alloy. And I guess technically since we're doing it this way, there was not really much need in doing the basic on passive. But it's already set up now, so <laughs> I'm not going to take it down. So now the enhanced ingots should be requestable, assuming we have enough empowered Restonia. But yeah, all of that stuff should be done in the empowerer by now. Alright, so that brings us on to the next quest, which is the enhanced inactive ender core. These are made with the previous tier and then the ender alloys that we just made. Alright, we're making progress towards the ender chests here. The next thing we need is the advanced ender alloy. 
And for this we need crystalline alloy. I don't know if we current no, we don't currently passive this stuff. And we also need pink slime. And you know what that means? More ingots means more alloy smelters. <laughs> We're gonna need, I think, five more of these things. The first ingots are gonna be pink and also brown slime, which I mentioned are gonna sit on the last two slots of our first ingot wall. We do have to shuffle some channels around here, so I've changed out the end of the P2P with a dense cable and then split it off two ways here. Which should allow us to add our last interface that we need here. So yeah, first one is pink slime, which we will put the storage downgrade in. And this thing is going to be so nice to have on passive. These are used all over the place. Next one is crystalline pink slime. I actually forgot about this step. We first have to combine the pink slime with the grains of pizzality. And then this is the one that we have to convert to the brown slime. But this is also used on its own as well. So yeah, we use it in crafting co-processing units. But this does mean we will have to find another space for brown slime, which I guess can go over on this wall here. To make the brown slime, we need we use the pink slime we just made and also the fertilizer, which we're making plenty of over here at our cow farm. We have uh, actually a full drawer here. And this brown slime and also the crystalline slime isn't actually required for the next step of our quest here. But I just thought since we were adding the pink slime, we should add this one as well. But yeah, we do also need this crystalline alloy, which is elevatium. And we don't have this fully automated yet. There are still a few things we're missing, which I think... I mean, I guess we can add this by now since we have more resources. So actually, let, yeah, let's just add this ingot on this alloy smelter here. But the grains of Pizzelli we already have on passive and same with the vivid alloy. We already passive that over, over there somewhere. I think it's that one up there. And yeah, this ingot is definitely not cheap. <laughs> so we're definitely going to want to make sure we have the storage downgrade on this. And even at that, that might be too much. I mean, technically this is two stacks of Elevatium, which we actually may not have in our system yet. Yeah, we need to set up the rest of the processing for Elevatium. But eventually this thing will fill its buffers. And we're now making our crystalline alloy ingots. But now I think these advanced ender alloys, we should just probably do on demand. Yeah, I think we will do it on demand. At least all of the input items are done passively. So now we can request four very, very expensive ingots <laughs> to hopefully complete our quest. I love this stage in the game though, when we have all of our applied energistics unlocked. It's so nice to be able to see this crafting status screen all green. All right, but I think this opens up the second to last gate from our ender chest over here. We need to make the inactive ender core advanced, which is just a step up from the enhanced version. It just takes these new ingots that we created. All right, nice. So we now have the inactive ender core, which we have to activate by going to the end. And it says we need to right click on an end crystal. To make our ender chest though, we're obviously going to want more than one. So let's try to request another one of these things. Yeah, we can do one. Maybe let's do another two if we can. I don't know if we have enough materials for this though. Mm, we're missing some more crystalline alloy. I bet that's because of the elevatium. Yeah, we don't have any more elevatium. I also forgot to configure the output side to this thing. To make more elevatium though, the way we currently have this set up is we just have to request some more crystal bundles as we do have all of the inputs automated for this. And then we already have this empower set up to automatically pull the crystal bundles and empower those things, which should then get atomically reconstructed. And yeah, as you can see here, we it looks like we drop below the threshold of the empowered diamantine, so it's sort of automatically crafting us more. But yeah, I think in between episodes, I'll also add one for empowered Restonia, probably stack it on top of the diamantine there. So with more elevatium, can we at least craft two more of these things? We just need some more buckets, yeah, so we can at least get two more. Oh, and we also get one free for the quest. Oh, and four more here, once we uh, make it advanced. So I received a comment last episode mentioning that we could actually use the mechanical user here to automate the activation of these crystals, which actually removes the need for this tender ender blender. This of course has to be done in the end though, which means that we do need the end crystal. To make the ender crystal though, we need some gas tears. Oh no, we lost, we're gonna lose the tier. Oh, I burned up. <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to find another ghast for like 30 minutes here. This elytra upgrade is also quite nice for getting around the nether like this. Much faster, I think, than the glider or just the sky sorter on its own. Oh, wait, I hear one. Where are you? He's over here somewhere. There you are. No gas tier though, <laughs> of course. <laughs> that really did take 30 minutes to get these gas tiers. But finally, we can make our ghast block. And now also the end crystal. All right, let's take a little trip to the end again. Just on the off chance it worked, I tried it on one of these teleporters that we can go through for the end, and it seems to have uh, placed it here. So now by the tooltip, I think we just have to right click these things. Yeah, and we make them advanced, nice. And we get four more inactive ones. Let's try to use the mechanical user to activate the four we got from our quest reward. So I don't know if it has to be one block below. Oh, nice, that actually works. <laughs> 
Oh, that is awesome. All right, and is this also within one chunk? It is. Nice. So we can, yeah, we could actually chunk load this place and then set up a ender chest here and then even request these things on demand. But yeah, let's activate these ones, take these back, and we'll make our ender chests. Fortunately, we do have a spare dimensional transceiver that I made last episode, and we're going to need one of these for the ender chests, and uh, I think the quest actually also gives you a free ender chest. But obviously in the future we're going to want more than one, which means that we'll have to automate the transceiver, and for that we need a couple of these soulbinder recipes. Mainly the enderman one, and I think we also need a witch for this. Yeah, we need the witch. However, now that we have, well, we don't have it yet, but <laughs> we can make the powered spawner, which is something I think we'll look into next. It's going to be much easier to get those soul vials. But now we can just drop in a couple of recipes, and I think we have the ender chest that's craftable. Oh yeah, we are running out of interface slots once again. <laughs> yeah, looks like we can request our ender chests. Finally! <laughs> it's kind of crazy when you think how gated these ender chests actually are. But there is our quest for the ender chests. And of course we'll grab our free one. So I think we'll put our ender chest to use next episode. We have to craft up a few more of these things. We'll want one on both the quarry and also the quantum quarry. I think we'll also put some in the nether and also in the end. But there is one more thing before we finish off today. Uh, well, first of all, <laughs> at the start of this episode, I was adding more filters to this thing and I switched it off. And yeah, I forgot to switch this thing back on. So <laughs> all day today, this thing has been off, which isn't really ideal. But even still, we're we're looking pretty healthy on our uh, resource supply here. This quantum quarry can also take a biome marker, which will assign a biome for it to mine in. And most of you guys seem to suggest the corallium infested swamp, which we do have to visit to activate this biome marker. And I think there's one over to our north here. The reason we want it to mine in the swamp is to get Corallium Ore, which I think is something we'll be using in the next chapter. Yeah, I think it's used in chapter 14 for Abyssal Craft. So once we're here, I think we just shift right click. Yeah, and that changes it to the infested swamp, which we can now put in our quantum quarry. So yeah, now you can see the biome has changed to Corallium Infested Swamp, and we already have some Corallium Ore up there, which I've added to the drawers. But yeah, with that, I think we're going to finish off here for today. I think tomorrow we may end up starting chapter 14. There is still a few more things to clean up though in chapter 13, so we may end up doing that instead. I will also add the Empower, as I mentioned, and try to craft up a few more Ender Chests for us. But we got a lot of progress today, we upgraded our armour, this has been very nice today. And of course we added many more ingots to our ingot wall. In fact we even filled this thing up, this will need some conduit facades on it. But yeah with that, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for some more Divine Journey 2.